And I'm going to go back to this. Like I stated in the intro, please let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think Kyle McCord outsmarted Ohio State and Ryan Day? And man, oh man, when I tell you this had me second guessing myself and reevaluating my life, I mean it. You got to see this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you're ready for some drama in college football on your Tuesday night because things are heating up. There's a lot of stuff going on, especially in the transfer portal, but one thing in particular we got to speak on is the Kyle McCord situation. We've been following the situation very closely, but things just got really interesting, and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. A little foreshadowing here. And I'll just throw this out there right now, give you a little teaser. I think Kyle McCord outsmarted Ryan Day in Ohio State. You're going to want to see what's going on there, but also we got to talk about the breaking news that Florida State just had one of, if not arguably, their best player leave, and he's not going to be playing for the Georgia game. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And the number one offensive lineman in the transfer portal who many people thought was being tampered with by Dylan Gabriel, he has announced where he's going. It is more than safe to say it's going to be a jam-packed video per usual. Get you a snack, get your popcorn, get your favorite meal you like to eat when you watch a video because trust me, I do the same thing. And real quick, real quick, as most of you know, we're trying to hit 310k subscribers before a new year. We are super close, so if you want to help us get a little bit closer, consider joining our amazing college football community. Shout out to everybody that's already subscribed, but blah, 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 Matt. Shut the crap up. Now without further ado, that's... All right, first things first, I got to talk about this because this is huge. There were rumors and speculations going on in which I stated I didn't believe in, but a lot of people believed Dylan Gabriel, who left Oklahoma to go to Oregon, he was tampering with Caden Green. And I know some of you are probably sitting there saying, well, Matt, who is Caden Green? To give you some context, this is an Oklahoma offensive tackle. There were some rumors being thrown around that Caden Green, he's going to follow Dylan Gabriel and go to Oregon, and some Oklahoma fans weren't too happy about that. And what did I say about it? I'm not even going to pull up the video. I'll just repeat it again right here. I stated dang near word for word, I didn't think Dylan Gabriel had some mastermind plan to bring Caden Green with him to Oregon. Even if it turned out that Caden Green was going to go to Oregon, which, spoiler, he did not, I just thought it was a coincidence. And to make a long story short here, it is official Caden Green is not going to Oregon. He's going to Missouri. This is a huge pick up for Missouri because Green is the number one offensive tackle in the transfer portal. And just like this comment says right here, OU fans trashing Dylan Gabriel for no reason is so hilarious. I will throw this in there, not every Oklahoma fan trashed Dylan Gabriel and was writing bad stuff about him, but there were some people that were, and I just didn't understand it. Outside of that, there's not too much to say about this besides the obvious. This is a great pickup for Missouri. And also, I think it's great for Caden Green because unless something crazy happens, he's easily going to be a starter on that Missouri team. Wish him the best of luck, but I did want to share you that news, but we are going to move on to our second topic. And that is no other than, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Florida State, it's not looking good for him because their star edge rusher, Jared Verse, he is declared for the NFL Draft. I guess I should just start out by saying this if you can't put two and two together here. He has opted out of the bowl game. He's not playing against Georgia. That is a detrimental loss considering he is arguably one of, if not their best players. Florida State was more than likely, even if he did play, going to lose to Georgia. But now, yeah, it's definitely not going to help you without having him out there. And I don't blame the guy because I've been advocating for players to sit out meaningless bowl games for years now. If you want to play in this game, all power to you. But if you don't want to play in this game, all power to you. I don't look at you any different. I get it. Playing in a bowl game like this, it is strictly nothing more, nothing less than a business decision. No matter what these players do, I respect their decision. And a lot of people, they just don't do that. It's very easy for Joe Schmo sitting on the couch to say, oh yeah, I'd play in a meaningless bowl game. I'd play in the Gator Bowl if I was given the opportunity. Well, here's the difference. You're not given the opportunity. You're not in that situation. You don't have millions of dollars on the line. And the one example I just can't get out of my head and I think about it time after time after time when talking about this situation is no other than Matt Corral. I remember talking about it before the bowl game. I said he should have sat down because he would have been a first round pick. Worst case scenario, early second round pick. Matt Corral was balling out that season, but he decided to play in that bowl game against, was it Baylor? Yeah, I think it was Baylor. And we all know what happened. And I also believe it was on the first possession. Matt Corral, he got hurt and... Pretty much, as much as I hate to say it, that was the end of his career. Because ever since then, he wasn't given a real shot in the NFL, and that's it. So if you need a reason as to why you shouldn't play in a meaningless bowl game, take a look at Matt Corral. That's all you need to see and know. But getting back on track here with Jared Verse, wish him the best luck. He's going to be a first-round pick. I don't think he'll go in the top 10, but I could see him around that 
I'd say 13, 14, 15, 16 range. Who knows though? He might go in the top 10 at number seven, eight, nine, and that wouldn't shock me either. I could talk about that all day, but we gotta get to move on to the main topic of the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video. What in the world is going on with Ryan Day, Ohio State, and no other than their former quarterback, Kyle McCord. To make a long story short here, you should know this by now. I'm not giving you a brief run through. Kyle McCord, he entered the portal. Now, whether he wanted to leave because he just didn't like it or the coach and staff told him, hey, we're probably gonna go after somebody else, that's up for debate and I'm not here to talk about it because it doesn't even matter. What matters is he's left. He's gone. Period. The end. Well, guess what? It's official. Kyle McCord, he's transferring to Syracuse. I've stated more than likely I thought he wound up going there and I think it's great for both parties. It's great for Syracuse because you're getting a former five-star quarterback and Kyle McCord, he proved himself in this most recent season. Now, did he prove that he can lead you to a championship? Not necessarily, but he won 11 games. Let's not act like that's not a big deal. It is. I'll put it to you like this. If you're a fan of Syracuse football, this is arguably one of the best quarterbacks you're ever going to get within the next 10, 15, 20 years. And on the flip side for Kyle McCord, I think he's extremely happy because he knows he's not going to have to look over his shoulder. You're not going to have some toxic fan base saying you should be benched after two incompletions. He doesn't have to worry about any of that. He knows he's a starter and he's the guy. And I know what some of you are sitting here saying, well, Matt, why are you even talking about this? It's not a big deal. And hey, I was in the same boat as you because when I first saw this, I was like, oh yeah, that's good for Kyle McCord. Syracuse, they might win eight games next year. Wish them the best of luck. You know, it's Syracuse. Let's not try to act like there's some football powerhouse. When you think of Syracuse, you think of basketball, or at least I do. Well, then out of nowhere, I stumbled across this tweet and I can't remember if somebody sent it to me or I just saw it on my homepage. It is from Mr. Ohio. This is a big Ohio State fan and here's what he tweeted out. Can't believe I'm going to say this, but no FSU, Clemson, or North Carolina on the schedule. They put a team around him, and Syracuse could find their way into the playoff conversation next year. Keep in mind, when I read that tweet, what you're seeing right here, I haven't even seen Syracuse's schedule. And my immediate reaction to that was, what in the crap are you smoking? What are you talking about? Syracuse in the playoffs? You can't even put that in the same sentence, man. What is going on? And I was curious. I was like, you know what? Let me see what this guy's talking about. So I pulled up Syracuse's schedule. And man, oh man, when I tell you this had me second guessing myself and reevaluating my life, I mean it. You gotta see this. This is Syracuse's 2024 college football schedule. Not basketball, not lacrosse, not water polo, not soccer, college football. First game, they open up with Ohio. I think we can all agree. That's an easy win. Second game, at Army. I think we can agree again. They'll probably win that game. After Army, you got Holy Cross. Easy win. Then after Holy Cross, you got one of the worst teams in the nation, UConn. First four games, easy dubs. Your hardest game on your schedule in the first four is Ohio. And I mean that with all due respect, but Syracuse should beat Ohio. And as I'm looking at the first four, I'm like, okay, it's your typical easy three, four game stretch. Eventually, it's going to heat up. Fifth game at Boston College. Boston College isn't a powerhouse. Syracuse will probably be favored in that game. After BC, you got California. They're not that great. That should be an easy 6-0 start, realistically. After California, NC State, that is a very winnable game and one of their hardest games on the schedule. After NC State, you got Pitt. Pitt's not very good. Then you got Georgia Tech. They're not very good. Miami, who knows how they're going to be. Miami could go anywhere from 10-2 to 4-8. Then after Miami, you got Stanford. They were awful this year. And then you got Virginia Tech. I didn't look it up, but I would love to know what their strength of schedule is. It has to be the easiest if not one of the easiest what is there i think it's something like 133 fbs teams in college football d1 well at 133 this has got to rank somewhere at 130 131 132 if not last in all the nation i mean guys seriously there is a great chance let's just say syracuse has a blunder or two they could go 11 and 1 or 10 and 2 and sneak into the playoff that is not absurd to say i mean there's only about two games on here, or three games, that I think they might lose. Let's just point out some of the hardest games, right? I would say the two hardest games is probably, okay, Miami definitely, and NC State, maybe Georgia Tech. And think what just came out of my mouth. Their two or three hardest games is Miami, not a top 25 team this year, Georgia Tech, not a top 25 team this year, and NC State. And remember, I'm going to remind some of you, the 14 playoffs over with after this year. 12 teams are getting in. That's crazy. And check out this comment. That looks so much like a mid-80s independent schedule, LOL. And I agree. I have yet to see a schedule that easy in my life. Hold on. Let me go back to it. Let me go back to it. Because I'm curious. Do they even have a top 25 team? No. There more than likely won't be a top 25 team on their schedule. Or maybe not even a top 30 team. Maybe Miami would be a top 25 team. Maybe if NC State turns it on. But 
That's it. What do y'all think about that? And major shout out to Mr. Ohio for tweeting this out. And y'all know this. I've had Kyle McCord's back since day one. I didn't think he was that bad this year at Ohio State. I wouldn't say he played great, but I'd say he had a good season. It's just a standard at Ohio State for the quarterback is great. That is the bare minimum. You've got to be great. Anyways, though, let's take a look at Ohio State's schedule. Open up with Southern Mississippi, Western Michigan, and then Marshall. So you got an easy first couple of games. Then you play at Michigan. Well, now, now that I look at it, yeah. Ohio State's first six games are easy because you got Michigan State and Iowa. But then you got to go to Eugene, Oregon. You got Nebraska. Nebraska sucks. Got to go to Penn State, Purdue. Okay, yeah, still same sucky Big Ten schedule. But my point is, at least in this schedule, you got to play what's going to be a top 10 Michigan team, a probably top 10 Oregon team, and top 10 Penn State team. Outside of that, Ohio State's schedule still sucks, but you're going to have three extremely tough games. Whereas for Syracuse, they don't even have any tough games. They don't even have a top 25 game. So now that I think about it, I'm going to ask you guys this question. Do you think this persuaded Kyle McCord's decision? Because I think it did. Because I'll tell you right now, and I think everybody's in the same boat as me, I'd much rather play against the schedule you see right here than Ohio State's schedule. Granted, Ohio State still doesn't have that tough of a schedule, but it's tougher than Syracuse's. And it also goes back to Kyle McCord doesn't have to worry about being benched unless he's playing straight up awful but he doesn't have to worry about fans calling for his job and et cetera like he would at Ohio State. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Ohio State fans holding their quarterbacks to a high standard because that's the standard. It's just what's going to happen. It happens at Georgia, Alabama, everywhere. It's just really interesting, though, because we don't really talk about this too much when we talk about players entering the portal and wherever they decide to come out of high school. Because I do think stuff like this, the schedule and how hard it's going to be, it does somewhat go into the players' decisions. And I'm going to go back to this. Like I stated in the intro, please let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think Kyle McCord outsmarted Ohio State and Ryan Day? Because when you sit back and think about it, you know dang well Ohio State is not going to win a championship next year. It's just not going to happen. Why go back to Ohio State just to lose to Michigan again and the fan base do the same thing they do every single year since you've lost to Michigan? Just critique the coaching staff, critique the players, and yada, yada, yada. You know how it goes. Why do that when you can go to Syracuse and play a cupcake schedule and go easily 10-2? and two? I could sit up here and talk about this forever. I'll leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh,